the warm-up presented by Blanchard Valley Health System. I'm Mark Koontz. Matt Finkel will join us in a little bit as today we are at Liberty Benton High School to talk to the defending BVC champion Eagles and head coach Tim Nichols joins us now, the Blanchard Valley Conference Coach of the Year a season ago. And you look back on last year, undefeated regular season, tough loss to Huron obviously in week 11, but a lot to be proud of what the Eagles accomplished in 2013. Yeah, you know, hopefully those seniors left here and, and the big goal was, because it hadn't been done in five years till last year, was to win the league. And uh, we spent a lot of time discussing that and, and a lot of focus went into that and we were able to get that accomplished. And um, then you try to hurry up and switch gears and try to get a you know a run there and, and the playoffs and, and you're on putting into that pretty quick. But, uh, you know, all in all that, that that's where we would, uh, you know, that's what you want to do every year, and, and that sets the bar for, um, you know, the seniors and the team this year to uh, figure out a way to um, one-up the class before them. You look at uh, what you graduated from last year, a couple of offensive linemen that were all conference. Obviously, Brandon May was the defensive player of the year in the, in the BBC. He had a good, great receiver in Chase Cook. So you got some, some holes to fill in this year. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more of those than uh, probably the year prior. So, um, but we do have some, you know, some things coming back. But, um, you know, we're trying to get our kids in the best shape possible from the line standpoint. And uh, it's looking like we're going to have to have some kids that go both ways and haven't had to do that in previous years. And then, um, you know, we're just going to figure out where our niche is. Uh, you, we can't replace the speed of Chase Cook and Joel Bell and Anthony, the playmaking they can do once the ball is in their hands. So um, we have some young kids, um, and we'll find out more as we get going here with the scrimmages. But uh, um, you may not be able to fill the shoes, but we need some kids to, st to step up and, and at least, um, you know, get, get, give the other team something to think about. You know, the old line is the best thing about sophomores is if you let them, they become a junior a year later. And Nathan Kraft, junior quarterback, certainly grew into that role last year as a sophomore. He did. He did. Um, we've never quite seen a kid do that. Um, where he started and no experience whatsoever. And, you know, week 10, we thought he may have had his best game against Arlington. And, and you know, he just got better as the year went on. And now um, he needs to understand. And, and we tell him quite often uh, you know, he's raised the bar himself, and now he's got a year under his belt. So um, we're going to put some more on his plate, and um, if he responds, hopefully um, things will go okay for us. Also in that backfield with Kraft, Austin Combs, coming off a 1,200-yard rushing campaign, scored uh, 26 touchdowns for you last year. And, uh, you know, there's going to be no secret. It, it's going to – he's going to get the ball, and uh, um, – you know, everybody knows that that's going to happen, and, and we're going to start there, and then hopefully our offense can branch out from that standpoint. So, um, you know, it, you don't have to try to out-trick yourselves, and we have some things that we think we can do and some strengths, and Nate and Austin better be a uh, um, better be a big part of that. One of the challenges for the Eagles this year, simply there's not that many kids in the school playing football. you got a little bit of a, of a numbers issue as opposed to years past. Yeah, probably. I mean, when we look at it, this is probably the lowest um, maybe we've been. You know, um, you know, with with 40 kids on our on our team this year, so um, that's what makes the conditioning part of knowing multiple positions, which we've tried to get done here in camp and stuff, big. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, a bruise here, a bump there, and and you got to move kids around. So um, you know that there's a huge light at the end of the tunnel. Our, we feel our program's on pretty solid ground as our younger midgets and middle school come up through here, but. Uh, for a while, it's going to be a number squeeze, and we're just in turn now. We're going to turn and ask the kids to, uh, they got to meet that and, and do a little bit more than what they've done. Having so many underclassmen that you're going to rely on this year, did this new loosening of, of, of the offseason, some expanded offseason, things that you could do as a coach this year, could that come out at a better time for you guys having all those younger kids coming up? Um, you know, we, we, I suppose, took advantage of that a little bit, but, uh, you know, the big thing that, that, that we, and I think we're getting good at that is is uh, everybody thinks we're such a big school um, and we are a bigger school compared to most of the leagues from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, sharing our athletes, uh, giving kids times to go do the baseball stuff and giving them time to do basketball mm -hmm. and, and getting our kids to be multi-sport kids. Um, you know, I think Macomb and Arlington and Lipsick and those kids, they do a great job. They travel as a pack from sport to sport to sport. And... Um, 
we've just seen a little trend here lately that hasn't necessarily maybe been the case. So we're, you know, all the head coaches are trying to be extremely proactive of you got to be sensitive to allow them to go to do other things, but at the same time you want to get your stuff in. Right. So hopefully we got a little better balance of that, but um, we've really slowed things down in camp so far. And uh, I think our kids are catching, uh, we're going to find out. There ain't going to be no thinking to it here in about a week, but mm -hmm. uh, I think we're, we're where we want to be right now. LB Division 5, BVC adding Hopewell Loudon. They'll be on your schedule week number five. One of the other larger schools now in the conference. Hopewell Loudon, North Baltimore, Riverdale. What do they bring to the BVC? Obviously, they, they bring a little bit of stability to the conference. Right. I think that's probably first and foremost. You know, <clears throat> football is a numbers game, and there's been you know, there's some programs right now that are, you know, we're down in numbers, and, and teams are a little bit struggling for numbers. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think the sport of football is under attack a little bit um, at the Heck, from the NFL to college mm -hmm. to high school. So it, um, I think those teams bring, like you said, stability. And then it'll be interesting that, you know, a new coach there at Riverdale and, and Hopewell's, uh, you know, solid. And um, hopefully it'll just, you know, our league will just continue to get better from top to bottom. And, and that's better for everybody. Coming off of the, the BBC championship, target on your guys' is back. Arlington, Lipsick, Macomb, the usual favorites are going to be there right with you. Tell us a little about how you think the league's going to look this season. Well, I'd probably, I'd probably agree with what you just said. Um, you you know, know, four, four teams that all made the playoffs last year out of the BBC. Right, right. Um, and, you know, then Van Buren's always is, is right there. And I think they've been close the last two or three years to a breakout year, and I think injuries have hampered them. But, um, you know, they do a great job over there, and, and they're just maybe a game away from, from being there too. But... You know, I, th I think it's just south of here. I think Arlington has the pieces. Um, they're they're going to be hard to beat. I mean, they just, from veteran kids to the size they got to the, you know, Reddick running the ball, they're, uh, and and I know we talk about it already. I, we feel they're going to be really good. They gave us a great game last year, and it'll be fun when we head down there week five or six to do week that. Week six, and, yeah. And, um, you know, then you can't ever get out Macomb and, and I know uh, Coach Mangus at Lipsick will, uh, you know, he'll have those kids probably throwing the ball around a little bit. So just that time of year, it's good to sit back and speculate, but you got to take care of your business and make sure you're ready. Um, and then it, it'll play out, and somebody will get to say they're 2014 champs, and that would be great if it was us. Eagles open up against Bucyrus at Winford. They will take on Hopewell Loudon week five, Lipsick week four. The Lipsick and Hopewell Loudon games you'll be able to see on WOSN. Need to take a break on this warm up presented by the Blanchard Valley Health System. When we return, more with LB here on WOSN. Welcome back to the warm-up. I'm Matt Finkel. We are in Finley to chat with some of the Liberty Benton Eagles. This edition of the warm-up brought to you by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. Joined now by three Eagles seniors. It's Austin Combs to my right, running back, linebacker. B.J. Lawson in the middle, safety, wide receiver. And Chase Conkle on the end, wide receiver, defensive end. Austin, let's start with you. Just look back on 2013 for a second. Perfect regular season, and then you lose in week 11. Does that motivate you when you're coming out here this, this uh, August? Uh, yeah, that really motivates our team because we always like to get in the playoffs and try to make as long as a run as we can. And having that perfect uh, regular season and then just ending it right there has really motivated us. Yeah, BJ, you built all that momentum going 10-0 and and then the loss in, in week 11. How, does, how do you guys prepare coming out for this season knowing that you can accomplish that in the regular season, but obviously the goal is to advance deeper into the postseason. Yeah, as you said, it's really just motivated us a lot. We know that we could have gone farther, and that's what's in the back of our heads the entire offseason going into the season. That's what we're really looking forward to going into the season. Chase, what have you seen in uh, training camp so far? Are things going well here? Yeah, I think things are going really well. I mean, like you said, we, uh, we're motivated by the, by, uh, the playoff games. And, you know, Winford, they uh, – they haven't lost a game at their home field in 48 games, so that just that motivates us. We don't want to be the 49th, so I think training camp has gone really well so far. We've all been working hard. Yeah, Austin, a tough opener at Winford and then uh, home against Bowling Green before you get into the BVC schedule. What do you need to improve most upon 
between now and week one? Uh, I think as a team, we just need to find where people need to be and just need to get used to getting reps there, and I think we'll be good. BJ, you're a wide receiver. What have you seen out of the quarterback going forward here in training camp? Well, he had a great year last year, first year starting, and I think that has really built on. He's been doing great, you know. He's he's going where exactly where he left off and getting better every day. So. And Chase, any particular opponent you're looking forward to playing in the BBC? A rival, maybe? Um, I think Arlington. They're always we always like to play each other. It's always a good rival, and you know they're supposed to be good again this year. So I think that we're we're excited to play them, and you know Macomb and Lipsick and Van Buren. A lot of talent at top of the BVC. Thank you guys for sitting down with us. Time for a break on the warm-up presented by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. When we come back, more Liberty Benton players. Third down here on the warm-up from Finley talking with Liberty Benton. And this edition of the warm-up brought to you by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. Three more Eagles seniors with me now. Grant Kinsinger on the line to my right. Justin Ayotte in the middle, middle linebacker and center. Alan Hartley on the end, guard and defensive tackle. Grant, this senior class, only eight of you guys. Uh, what are you doing to teach some of the younger guys and uh, bring them together here in camp? Um, we really just got to show them how hard we work. So hopefully uh, they decide to come along. And Justin, you guys replaced a pretty strong uh, senior class last year. How are you guys filling into that leadership role? Um, uh, on the uh, linebacker side, we have to fill in, have Austin come in and play outside linebacker for us. And then uh, we're going to have four guys in the backfield that are new, but uh, we feel pretty confident with them in playing. And Alan, you're on the line. What, what have you seen out of the line so far in camp, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball? You guys, cohesive unit? Um, really? I've seen a lot of improvement this year with the young guys. Uh, they're really working hard, stepping up, because after losing that many seniors last year, we need guys to step up and start taking roles on the varsity level. So, Grant, what do you like about playing for Coach Nichols? <laughs> um, I like his enthusiasm. He, he's really enthusiastic with the way he coaches. I like his energy. I don't know. He's just a really good coach. Coach Nichols' practices, they have a certain passion to them that, that you experience? Um, yeah, he, was always, he always tries to have fun with his practices. Um, always keeps the energy levels high. Justin, you looking forward to a particular opponent in the BBC? Oh, yeah, uh, Arlington. That's the biggest one in my mind. I can't wait to play him every single year. Play Arlington in week six, and that is after a new opponent for you guys, Hopewell Loudon, in the BBC. Alan, what are you expecting out of them? Do you know much about them yet? Um, not really as of now, but as the season progresses, we're all going to learn more about them and uh, what they do. But um, I think they'll uh, bring some more good competition to the BVC, and it'll definitely be another challenge in our season. So, Eagles working hard, getting ready for week one. That does it here from Finley. Thanks to the Liberty Benton players and Coach Nichols. This edition of the warm-up brought to you by Blanchard Valley Health Systems. We'll see you next time on WOSN.